So yesterday we did make this video talking about the Arizona Coyotes placing forward Adam Ruzichka on waivers for the purpose of contract termination. And the big conversation as to why they were doing this was because of a video that Ruzichka posted onto Instagram, his story of him allegedly doing drugs, and that was a pretty big deal. He deleted the video right away, but the internet lives forever. This video was indeed posted elsewhere on social media, and the guy got canned because of it. Now, we did make the video yesterday talking about how it was kind of disturbing to see it going on. What we didn't talk about, though, was some of the extra stuff that you could illuminate in regards to NHL players and drug usage and even social media usage as well. Because after this came out, I think it would be fair to say that the majority of NHL fans on different social medias, I don't know too much about like Instagram, but I know for sure it was like this on Twitter. But I think the majority of people that I saw reacting to this piece of news were kind of outraged in a way. Hey, this guy is doing whatever recreational drugs he may be doing in his own home. It's the privacy of his own home. He's not hurting anybody. Why is he getting his contract terminated? And this is a perspective that I saw actually pop up a lot. I didn't really consider it myself, so that's kind of my bad. And there also was the perspective of social media effects getting into play here. Oh, Adam Ruzichka most likely was trying to send this video to somebody on his DMs, or he tried to put this on his close friend story and he accidentally put it on his main. Like, should he be losing his job for a mistake like that? I don't know. That was another perspective that I saw a lot of people bringing up in regards to this situation, but in order to get another, let's just say more thorough discussion going on, what I wanted to do was put your attention onto Frank Saravelli's tweet from earlier this morning. With the Arizona Coyotes expected to officially terminate Adam Ruzichka's contract today, here's a reminder that the NHLPA has 60 days to file a grievance. There is a reason the union helps operate the Players Assistance Program. One. Players should be directed there for help instead of getting terminated. Forever in the NHL, contract termination was the last resort, something rarely attempted for fear of reprisal from a strong union. Number two, for players, watching teams terminate and then shrug and know they'll battle it out later to mostly favorable results should be a very troubling trend. And number three, to that end, the clock is still ticking on the extension that was granted to the NHLPA on potentially filing a grievance against the Blackhawks to challenge Corey Perry's termination from November. To date, no grievance has been filed. Now, what exactly is it that Saravelli is talking about in this Twitter thread? Well, essentially, he's talking about the idea that the Arizona Coyotes, instead of straight up terminating Adam Ruzichka's contract like they did today because he cleared waivers, they should, quote unquote, have decided to put Ruzichka in the player's assistance program instead of terminating him. Now, that is the main perspective that we're going to be talking about in this video. And there are some pretty interesting replies to this Twitter thread. Like this one, for example, from Mr. B. Taking a video of yourself doing coke would get you fired from any job. What are you snorting, Frank? Well, that's the thing, Sarah Vaila replies. This isn't a normal job, and these aren't at-will employees. They are under contract and guaranteed specific rights and processes as determined by that standard player contract and collective bargaining agreement. The first step in that process is supposed to be send that player to the player's assistance program, not terminate him. Then there's another reply, I'm still trying to understand this, like, there's a world in which a pro hockey player getting caught doing cocaine would be sent to the NHLPA rather than arrested by authorities? Are the police involved in this situation at all? Then there is a reply that actually brings up a pretty good point. An alleged video of allegedly using what could appear to be illegal drugs is not enough to get arrested. It's just the same as being high or drunk, that's not enough to get you arrested. And as we had talked about in the video yesterday, I think maybe some of my legal incompetencies were illuminated with this video, kind of saying like, yeah, you know, cocaine's illegal. Whatever white powder that you snort up into your nose, it's illegal. And there are different parts of the law that define what is illegal about it. The possession of it, the selling of it, the consumption of it, whatever, whatever, whatever. At the end of the day, posting a video about yourself doing it is not proper. And as we had talked about in the other conversation here, like, 
hey, it would get you fired from any job if you posted something like that publicly. So when it comes to this rebuttal, like the fact that it's not really a normal job and there are agreements and rules that protect players from certain things happening against them, like getting contracts terminated, it is interesting to acknowledge that there still may be a little bit more to this conversation than meets the eye. Because there are a few extra things here that are talked about, especially if you scroll down over here. The alleged video allegedly using what could appear to be illegal drugs it's not enough to get arrested, but it is enough for Arizona to be confident enough to terminate his contract? Are you saying Arizona did this without knowing it was cocaine? Bad business move. Here's the thing. If he was any good, they wouldn't have terminated him. There's no downside for them to quote-unquote make an example. Players will still play for them, and players will still do copious amounts of drugs, and no one will actually care. And that was another take that was posted out there. Hey, if it was Connor McDavid doing this, then... No, they're not terminating Connor McDavid. Part of the reason the Arizona Coyotes were able to do this with Adam Ruzichka is because Adam Ruzichka is Adam Ruzichka. We even said this in the video yesterday. The guy got three games with the Coyotes and he got zero points. So it's not really like this is too much of a needle mover anyway. But it does kind of beg the question, what is the level of appropriation that you could have for giving players leeway? Oh, if Adam Ruzichka was a 30-goal guy, would the Arizona Coyotes have terminated his contract? Probably not. But at the same time, would there have been more of an enforcement to place him into the NHL Players Assistance Program, and would he have taken that? Because at the end of the day, conduct of doing this is not proper. Like, in any professional circumstance, you could understand why putting this video on your social media story would get you fired from your job. It happens all the time, right? Improper conduct with employees resulting in terminations or firings. This happens in the real world. The NHL, I'd say it probably counts as part of the real world. So in this world, what are the repercussions and ramifications that should be in place here? As we had talked about in the video yesterday as well, I'm pretty sure that when it comes to NHLPA stuff, the player himself actually has to accept being able to go into the program. So whether or not Ruzichka was told that he should have gone, or maybe if he said he didn't want to go, maybe that could have been something. But like, at the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't really seem like there was enough of a timeline for Ruzichka to have been offered that NHLPA spot and opportunity because the Coyotes, I mean, upon that video surfacing yesterday, they just went out there and said, yeah, no, sorry, you're done. Waivers. You're out. And there are other perspectives that I understand as well. Like if cocaine use is grounds for contract termination, then the NHL would simply cease to exist because... I don't know if you know this, but word around the block is that a lot of NHL players do it, and it's not really something that gets them terminated. But the problem is, there's a difference between doing it in your own home and posting about it. And I think that is the crime, that everybody is not really taking too seriously how Ruzichka did indeed publicize what it was that he was doing. Unintentionally, most probably so. But he still did it, and now that video is on the internet, and it's never going to be removed because the internet lives forever. So, this, I think, is a good opportunity to kind of listen and think about what the NHL does and what teams do when it comes to drug-related terminations and what they should do. And it's also a thought process into literacy and social media because, look, if Rizichka didn't post that video, he'd still have a job. That's it. Like, even if somebody came out there and said, oh, Adam Ruzichka's doing drugs, like, if anybody goes out there and says that about a player, like, it's like, okay, well, cool, like, everybody else does it, like, this league is notorious for that happening over and over and over again. But the difference is, none of these players posted about them doing it on social media, so there is a difference here, and that's why these kinds of measures were taken, it's just... The leeway as to Ruzichka being a player that's not so great anyway makes it even worse because it's like, yeah, if it was Connor McDavid who did that, if it was Connor McDavid who accidentally posted the video, like, he wouldn't be terminated. That's the thing, right? So, where's the line in the sand? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Adam Ruzichka controversy and everything we have talked about in this video. What are your thoughts on Sarah Bailey's proclamation about the three points on the NHLPA? How players should be protected more so by these rules. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.